Most of the examples I've done so far have been fairly straightforward uh, one or two resistor circuits. So I want to give you some tools here for analyzing something that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, maybe it's got two, three, four resistors in it, and I'm asking you some more in-depth questions. So what we want to do is we want to, first of all, draw a circuit diagram. You're going to list all known and unknown quantities. I mean, drawing a picture is almost always our first step, and I really want to encourage you to do so. Draw a nice big picture that you can draw on, write on as you need to. Make it as neat as you can. Step by step, reduce the circuit to the smallest number of equivalent resistors. Um, in this class, we'll be able to reduce them always to one. What I mean by that is using those rules that we saw in the previous lecture about equivalent resistance of series and parallel circuits, we're going to try and reduce our circuit to the very simplest possible version of it that we can. Um, in our class, we're going to be able to reduce our circuits to one resistor, basically always. Uh, now, there are more complicated circuits where you can't do that. In fact, in general, your average circuit, you can't. But in this class, we'll constrain ourselves to make it so that that's possible. Then what we're going to do is determine the current and potential across that equivalent resistance. Um, resistor, and then we're going to rebuild the circuit to answer any other questions that are asked. So the basic idea here is you simplify the circuit as much as you can, learn some information about it, and then you rebuild that circuit and you answer whatever questions you need to based on what we've learned from deconstructing it. Let's apply that to a, a, an example here. So here we see a circuit. It's not super complicated. One battery, uh, three resistors. I'm going to ask you some stuff. I'm going to ask you about current in the battery. I'm going to ask you about the current in one of these resistors and the power dissipated by this resistor. So the first thing that I want to do is just show you what not to do, right? So a lot of students, if I saw what's the power dissipated in the 5 ohm resistor, a lot of my students would just jump right to here. would say, oh, power is equal to delta V squared over R. Oh, I know what that is. My delta V is 10 volts squared. My resistance is 5 ohms, right? So this is, a, this is an incorrect solution to D. Well, what's wrong with that? What did I do wrong there? Well, because this is not the potential that's applied across the 5 ohm resistor, right? We, we would need to destruct, deconstruct the uh, circuit to figure out what the potential is across the 5 ohm resistor. Then we could use this. At this point, we don't know the current through the 5 ohm resistor either, which is why we can't just jump straight to D. That's why this is wrong, right? And I mentioned before, this is a fairly straightforward equation, right? It's rarely difficult to square one number and divide it by another. What's difficult is applying it. So this is incorrect, right? So we've got to be sure that we recognize this is an incorrect answer to D. But I wanted to show that to motivate why we have to go through the steps that I described in the previous slide, which is what we want to do. So even though I have a nice picture right here in front of me on my computer screen, of this circuit, I'm going to draw it on my board so that I have something to work with. Here is my circuit. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, we want to reduce this to the simplest possible one we can. Um, now, we have to be a little bit careful. There's really only one place we can start here, and that is these two resistors here. Are they series or parallel? Hopefully you decided that they were in parallel because they have the same potential across them. There is a junction in between them, so they're definitely not in series, but they do have the same potential, therefore they are in parallel. Now, what is the relationship between the 5 ohm and the 10 ohm? Are they series or parallel? Trick question. That was a trick question. I don't ask you very many trick questions. That was, the answer is neither. They're not series or parallel. Why? Do they have the same current through them? No, there's a junction in between. They don't have the same current, therefore they are not in series. Do they have the same potential? They don't. They don't share the same potential either. I don't even know what the potential is right now because I can't calculate it yet. Mm, they don't share the same potential, or they don't have to share the same potential always. Therefore, they're also not in parallel. That is neither series nor parallel. So, just because you have two resistors doesn't mean they're series or parallel. They might be neither like the 10 and the 5. They are neither. However, we do have one pure relationship. 
the 10 and the 10 are both in parallel. We actually already solved this in a previous lecture. In my previous lecture, we found that two parallel 10 ohm resistors have an equivalent resistance of 5 ohms. And we'd said that that is actually a fact you can memorize. The equivalent resistance of two identical resistors in parallel is one half of the resistance of the individuals. So, what does my circuit look like now? Now we have our 10 volt battery. And two 5 ohm resistors. Great. Simplified. Now, my 5 and my 5. Series or parallel? Hopefully you picked series. All of the current that goes through this also goes through this. Therefore, they are in series. And we actually solved this one before, too. The equivalent resistance of two identical resistors in series is twice the individual resistance. Therefore, there is our simplest version of our circuit. Now we can solve for the battery current. Part A, our battery current is I equals delta V over R equals 10 volts over 10 ohms equals 1 amp. Okay, our battery current is lovely so now we found oh wait whoops i got my numbering wrong here didn't i all right here we go let's back up all right that's b there's a okay so we found our equivalent resistance it was 10 ohms we found our battery current that is one amp now what is the current in the 10 ohm resistor i'm gonna go ahead and tidy up my board i will be right back Okay, now we're looking at part C. Again, we're going to use Ohm's law, and it says what's the current in the 10 ohm resistors. So, you know, we're going to definitely be doing something like... Um, but we have to be careful, right? We don't know the delta V right now. You might be tempted to plug in 10 volts, but notice 10 volts goes from this end of the 10 ohm to this end of the 5, right? So, it's not 10 volts across my 10 ohm resistor. Again, it's not hard running the numbers. It's hard knowing what to plug in sometimes. So in order to find the voltage across this, I feel like we've got to find the voltage across this guy right here. I'm going to turn this inside out. I'm going to use V equals IR now over here. So we're going to apply Ohm's law to this resistor right here, where delta V then equals... Well, the current. Do we know the current through this resistor? We do, because in part B, we found the current through the battery. We do. We do, because in part B, we found the current through the battery. The current through the battery was 1 amp. That means the current through everywhere along this line between the two junctions is also 1 amp. So there's a 1 amp current through this 5 ohm resistor. So, delta V equals I times R, that's 1 amp, times 5 ohms, five volts. That is across this resistor, right? So we have a drop of five volts across this resistor. That means that everywhere here, is at zero volts. Everywhere here then, right, we dropped five volts when we went from here to here, and this side's at zero, that means this side is at five volts. The top of the battery is still at 10 volts. Therefore, what is the potential difference across my 10 ohm resistor, not the 10 volts that was given in the original problem, 
it is 10 minus 5. There's 5 volts across that 10 ohm resistor. What is the current in it then? For part C, we say I equals delta V over R. That is 5 volts divided by 10 ohms, one half of an ohm. Woohoo! You know, there's other ways to get there. We could have also said, hey, we've got one amp in this leg, we've got two identical resistors. If the two resistors are identical, we'll get an equal split, half here and half here. But I did it this way because this will work every time, even when we don't have that nice symmetry. Now we're ready to answer D. We now, because right here, we found the potential drop across there, we could use that. We already knew what I was through that resistor, so we could have used I squared R. A lot of ways we could do it. In fact, we know V, I, and R for this resistor. So we can use any of those three power equations. I don't know, I'll just use P equals I times V. equals 5 watts. That is the power dissipated. Okay, again, none of these equations are hard, right? This equation, this equation, they're not hard on their own, but what you have to do is do a very thorough analysis and be systematic about it. And the other thing that you just can't do, which many people are tempted to do, is when you see a delta V, you don't just look in the problem to find whatever delta V is given. You just can't do that. Because in this problem, I mean, we have four distinct delta Vs, right? There's a V of the battery, delta V across here, across here, and across here. Now, in this problem, um, just the symmetry of everything made it so that, you know, the delta V across these were all the same. That was a coincidence of the numbers that I picked here and not a general principle. So again, you just have to be really careful. If you're looking for the power dissipated by a resistor, then it's the voltage across that resistor divided by, excuse me, yeah, if we're looking for the power dissipated by a resistor, then we want to use the current through that particular resistor times the voltage across that particular resistor.